Chris Duffin here. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, training cycle for grand goals. And for those of you that uh, aren't on the Kabuki.ms site, you may not recognize uh, Brandon here. So Brandon is our head coach for basically all of our uh, virtual uh, coaching and heads that system up. So he's the responsible for basically putting together a lot of the models, analyzing the, the data, um, and developing the training plans. And Brandon helps me in a very significant role uh, with my training. And uh, the reason for that is uh, obviously I'm capable of writing my own training programs, but I want to focus on being an athlete. And there's a great value in that, in having that, that second set of eyes, the taking the ego out of it. And it, it's just a very valuable thing in the process. And you'll find that a lot of a lot of people that coach out there also have coaches. So, um, so this is Brandon, and uh, I don't know. Want to introduce yourself? I don't know. Yeah, I mean that's uh, that's for for those of you who have uh, watched our podcast. I am in fact not the wizard in the closet, <laughs> but hopefully we can get by that at some point. Uh, uh, so let's talk about uh, the training. So in March, uh, I announced. Um, my plans of uh, being, you know, going for the thousand pound deadlift. And if you've watched my training, you'll see that it's changed significantly. I didn't just start like beating up the deadlift in March going, we're going to hammer the deadlift, we're going to hammer the deadlift. It was, we went in very specific cycles. Um, so a balance of, you know, going between hypertrophy cycles, strength cycles, and also kind of uh, the exercise selection uh, was periodized as well. And then, uh, there's some other overarching concepts uh, that overlay over that as we talk through it. But, uh, um, Brandon, you want to talk off with, uh, you know, kind of where you started and what uh, some of those cycles look like? Yeah. So, I started handling your training just before your last meet. And so, I had a really good idea about how Chris adapted to things, how he worked with, you know, um, different loading protocols, different uh, exercise selections. Um, and that, that period leading up to the start of the Grand Goals really gave me a good opportunity to actually learn him as an athlete. Um, and I think that's that, that's probably one of the biggest drivers of why you've been so successful, at least uh, with my success in that con contribution. Uh, um, but when we first started your cycle, like you said, we weren't only deadlifting. There wasn't a real need to get there immediately yeah. because we knew it would take some time. So starting now, the best way to describe this whole uh, grand goals training cycle uh, it's been six months mm -hmm. since you started uh, yep. almost yep. exactly yep. within a day yeah we did plan on nine months originally but mm -hmm. uh, just the way of things we feel that we've got uh, we did a test period and felt that uh, it was time to go with it now so yeah yeah I remember that nine months was the uh, original plan so starting out you had some front squat goals as well which actually happened to tie in really really well to the grand goal scheme of the deadlift um, so to start, we knew we couldn't go crazy with the deadlift because, pre yeah, previously Chris had only deadlifted once a week forever. Yep. Sometimes once every other week. Yep. So I knew, you know, one of the biggest drivers of his success would be getting his overall ability to do work up higher. You know, Chris is not shy to doing more work in the gym. There's an overall stress tolerance capability that, you know, wasn't there because he'd never done it. So goal number one was to be able to bring his actual trainability up to a point that we could uh, eventually progress into um, having these huge training sessions that were 900 pounds twice a week for four to five weeks on end, you know. What you're watching in this video right now. Yeah. Um, it's, we built into that. I will uh, kind of uh, digress here for a minute and just say, there is, in the recent, if you watch our podcast, um, I had this discussion with both Dr. Uh, Kelly Starrett and Dr. Stuart McGill uh, in regards to my current training, too, is a big part of my ability to do that is the movement assessment daily. So there's not like that's a standard movement prep that I follow, uh, per se, as mu so much as an analysis that I do, and then action that I take. And some days it may be basically virtually or no warm-up um, if my body is capable and ready. But if we didn't use the principles like on, that you see on kabuki.ms, there's no way I'd be able to hold up to be doing what you're watching in this video right now. 
So there was the training plan side of it, but also the movement preparation of the piece. So sorry to kind of go off. No, that, that, but that's, that's, that's something that has, important, to be, yeah. has to be addressed. Well, that's, a, that's, a, that's a whole point of, you know, that's, that's part of the area of trainability. So moving from that, you know, we could easily talk for an hour on this, but we only have a few minutes here. So moving from the point of bringing up his actual general trainability, we were doing small range of motion lifts, not very heavy, um, two times a week on top of his front squatting. So with the accessory work outside to begin with of his work, um, it wasn't completely general in nature, even though, you know, it might seem that way. All of, you know, especially for high level athletes, all accessory work in specific times of the year need to be very focused on one specific point. And that's the idea or the theory of unidirectional or singular directional loading. So for Chris, we knew that his hips couldn't take too much more to start outside of just deadlifting twice a week. So what other areas could we positively influence further down the road? And that happened to be your back strength. A little bit of quads, a lot yep. of back work. Chris was front squatting twice a week on top of doing heavy bent rows twice a week and other lighter upper back accessory works. After we got through that um, initial unidirectional loading period, um, we were able to successfully progress to deadlifting twice a week, very heavy, um, still keeping some of the, the accessory work in because it, it can't be a thing where we have an immediate drop off and go right to the heavy 900 two times a week. Um, a very gradual change, but that gradual change has allowed us to now be handling 900 plus twice a week and, you know, coming to the culmination of pulling a thousand here next week. Yep. And so an overlying thing of all this too is I, I call the, the OODA loop, but it's uh, constantly um, observing, orienting, deciding, and acting. So you can have a plan, but you've got to constantly like be there, be with the plan, feel how you're moving. It's part of the movement piece as well. Uh, but also filtering it, this is the, uh, the orienting side, filtering it through what decisions do you need to make. Not all observations are critical and not everyone needs to be, you know, action taken on it. So, so that's something, it's a military strategy, but uh, something that I think is really important to go, hey, how am I reacting to these front squats? How am I, you know, what are these little things that are popping up? How am I recovering? And constantly be looking at that. And it's, a, it's just an iterative it, you know, cycle that never stops uh, with your training. So, you know, you want to plan, but it's just like, as I said, it's a military strategy because everybody's got a plan going into a fight until they get that first punch. First thing goes wrong, oh my God, I've got this, this terror, this problem, and boom, their plan's done and they start from ground zero. You don't want to do that. Yep. You need to be able to stick with the plan. Yep, but I believe we're going to have an article that follows this too, yeah? Yes, yeah, so we're going to have uh, probably a few different articles covering this, so just wanted to kind of briefly uh, cover some of the concepts. Enjoy the video!